Hey everybody, Mark Edward Lewis here. I've got a little mix that I'm doing in Premiere Pro that I want to kind of give you an idea of what's possible in Premiere from an audio perspective. It's a live recording. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So we're here in Premiere Pro and it's just a live uh, concert with orchestra and tenor. Here's what it sounded like. These are all the stems that are here from the timpani to the woodwinds, the lead vocal, piano mics, percussion mics, organ mics, room mics, orchestra mics. And uh, these are uh, just referenced. Here's what it sounds like. Oh, deck the hall and trim the tree. It's Christmas. So we get that. And here's what the final mix ended up sounding like. So that's a pretty strong difference uh, between the two. And I'll show you what I've done here. I'm gonna go back to the original so you can hear what these sound like individually. So here's just the orchestra, which is pretty much just the drum. Actually, that's the affected version. Let me show you this here. So what I did to help that, and I'll just kind of go channel by channel, is as always I set up several submixes, one that's just for everybody, and then of course, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, another for a stage reverb, because all these have been close mic'd, uh, so it's going to sound very dry. So I want to add the sound of the stage, and then a hall reverb for the hall. And I've done this as I do for sampled orchestras. I do the same here, uh, and then I add an EQ that kind of takes out some of the sound of the reverb uh, when we need to do when we want to do that. Uh, let's go back here. So um, on the actual orchestra tracks, which is really just the drum tracks, what do I have here? I have a parametric EQ, which does a lot of bass because the bass player's in here, the drum bass drum's in here. I'm cranking out a lot of this 2.5K thing and then adding some sizzle up in the 13K range. And then in the multiband compressor, uh, I've got a nice slow attack so everything can pop, the drums can jump through, um, and a pretty strong ratio. Uh, really crushing the higher frequencies because those that snare drum is kind of in all the microphones. And snowflakes help the seas. And without the compressor. And the snare drum just gets really in our way. Uh, without that and a bunch of stuff kind of gets bulbous as well. Now if we turn off the EQs for both channels it's nice and sizzly but I miss all the bass drum and all the you know all the bump that's happening there in the bass drum and the bass and all that other stuff. Um, and I'll, obviously we're going to the hall verb and if I turn this off Actually, that was the wrong thing. There, this is the right one. Here, we'll turn this and this off. So it helps give us a little bit of a feel there. And then for the next tracks, the organ, uh, there's nothing happening on these tracks. They're really just room mics. They're just kind of room. So all I did for them here is... Just added a little stage and hall reverb to kind of drown them. You know, there's some trumpets in there, but that's about it. Uh, let's see. The next thing I did was then the percussion. This is orchestra percussion. And that's, you know... Pretty standard stuff, so I just added some high frequencies, if I remember what I did. Yeah, percussion here. Actually, it looks like I ducked some of the high frequencies, cut some of the lows because it was rumbling all over, and then added some, uh, 
some of the reverb that was missing, because again, this was all very, very close mic'd. The piano came in two microphones, um, and neither one did I like, so I just chose the worst, or the best of the worst. And then if we take a listen to this, what have we ended up with? Wait, piano, there we go. And what I did with this piano, um, and I'm a pianist, so I'm not ashamed. Um, I cut the heck out of it. Took anything that was abusive to the vocal out. Uh, all the lows are out. And then also did the tube modeled compressor at a very reasonable attack, just to balance out the dynamic range of uh, this particular player is a little too dynamic for my taste. There was nothing happening in the timp, timpani track. There was apparently, you can see the guy over here who's kind of just stand, sitting there doing nothing. So I used him as another room. Oh wait, that's the submix. Uh, timpani. No, no, that's him. Uh, and just kind of let him sit in there lowly. And then the winds have all kinds of stuff. That, you know, they've got the drums, they've got the winds, they've got all kinds of stuff. So I rolled off the lows, punched up the highs, and then did a multi-band compressor. And what I end up doing uh, as he continues to sing is the snare drum guy, drummer, gets really excited. And in, because the drums are just bleeding into everything, I can't just pull the snare drum down. So instead, what I've done, what I did was I changed the attack of the uh, high, two high frequency bands of this particular track to help take that snare drum down. Let me go over here to this place. And it really takes down the snap of the snare drum, which I really don't want to have in a woodwind track. Um, you, can, you can kind of see they put the drums, well, let's see, where's the next shot? They put the drums right next to the, the woodwinds and stuff. It's not exactly the smartest thing to do. Don't do that. Um, but together, all of these things make a really great holistic sound, which is what we're always going for. Individual sounds don't really work. You can't make every sound sound amazing because then you just have a big mush. So something has to give. Oh, yes. Let's look at his vocal. I forgot. Let's take a look at what I did to his vocal. Now, I've, met, I've been mixing Steve for years. Uh, oh, here we go. And what I typically do with him is just roll off anything that's 100 hertz or lower, because he's a tenor. And then I've just put the multi-band compressor very, very strongly here in this band. Because that's where a lot of his energy is. I'll turn this off. Deck the holes with... Boughs of holly, fa la 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 la. On. Tis the season to be jolly, fa la 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 la. So that it basically contours. Not only gives him a dynamic kind of crushing, so everything is a nice same volume, but it also balances a lot of those frequencies that might be poking through. Helps us get some more sibilance if we need it, or less if it's too much. Um, and it's, a pr it's an amazing plugin that I wish everybody would use. It's kind of the, as close to a good sound button as we could possibly get. Um, let's see. And then at the end, um, I've got all the reverbs and the master of all the other tracks going to a pretty substantial 14 decibel th boost into a limiter. Now, this is the isotope uh, uh, ozone limiter. The limiter in Premiere Pro isn't quite up to the task to be driven so hard, so you might need to find uh, some other limiter. If you're going to drive this really hard, I mean, look at these levels. Oh, silver bells, ring out the news, it's Christmas. Why? So, you know, it's not that hard, but it is a strong boost. And we like to keep this because up at, you know, in the high zeros if we can, never going over, always a minus 0.2 decibel. Uh, from the top uh, reduction there, so we never get the red lights, but it helps us compete in internet land. So, you know, and this isn't that many tracks, but it is what I would normally have mixed in a, you know, in a music, a so-called music digital audio workstation. But here in Premiere Pro, there was obviously picture that's involved, not a lot of picture cutting, just kind of drop in the pre-cut uh, show, and then take the stems and mix them in, 
and that's kind of it. Um, because there's so many great plugins that, are, plugins that are available in Premiere, almost all the same ones that are in Audition, you can do a lot of good work here. There are some downfalls, you know, we can't move tracks around. Uh, routing between buses is somewhat wonky if you have them out of order. Um, uh, there's a couple other things that I'm not super thrilled about. But in the world of, hey, what nonlinear editor would I want to be mixing audio in? Premiere is that. So uh, hopefully this has been helpful to you. And uh, if you've never used Adobe Audition or Premiere Pro, I invite you to come join us at cinemasound.com where we have hundreds of articles. And of course, here on this YouTube channel, uh, an awful lot of videos on how to do this, how to do great mixing and get great sounding results in all the Adobe products, uh, doing audio mixing and even editing. So I hope to see you uh, subscribing here. And then of course, uh, at cinemasound.com. If not, we will see you in the mixing studio.